All right. Happy Friday, you melon heads. Everybody enjoying their market crash? Are we having a nice crash day, everyone? Man, this week flew by. It was a fast week, and it was an eventful week. I don't even know how much the indexes are down across the course of the week. It was hard to keep track. We had 1,000 points one day and a few hundred the next. Just been all over the place. Um, just a nutty week. The big story is the strong dollar is killing everything. If, if I really had to, had to summarize what's going on in the world right now, the strong dollar is going to kill everything. All right, The Fed is tightening. Other central banks around the world are loosening. We'll talk a little bit about some of those stories. That's causing a, a panic out of foreign currencies and into U.S. dollars. And as that is happening, it is driving up the value of the U.S. dollar, of course. It's driving up the dollar index. Keep in mind, when I say strong dollar, we're talking about dollar versus other currencies, not dollar versus consumer products at the store, because we're in an interesting time right now, and we're kind of getting squeezed at both ends here because the strong dollar is driving down asset prices. It's driving down the price of stocks. It's driving down the price of commodities. It's driving down the value of your house, probably starting to. But at the same time, inflation and inflation expectations and all the money printing from years past is still driving up the cost of your life. So we're really, we're getting squeezed at both ends now, we being the average person in the world. And it's it's creating some very interesting dynamics in the world of finance right now. And, you know, I there's a lot of debate about Brent Johnson's dollar milkshake theory out there in the world. If you're not familiar with it, I'll, I'll butcher it if I try to summarize it. But it basically is the story of when the, and he called this years ago, when the Fed starts tightening how it's, while the other central banks are loosening, it's going to cause a stampede into dollars. It's going to cause the dollar to explode in relative value. And it doesn't end well for anybody. Well, you know, I've seen a lot of really ugly fights on Twitter between, you know, various people on different sides of the dollar milkshake theory. But it's it's pretty hard to argue with the fact that this is really the way the things seem to be panning out right now. So, I mean, hey, let me know in the comments. What do you think about the dollar milkshake theory? Do you subscribe to it? Do you disagree? Why do you disagree? I mean, I'll be honest. I haven't studied it that hard, but just looking at the numbers. I mean, Brent Johnson has called this so far. And by the way, Brent Johnson is out there on Twitter right now, and he's saying 150 on the Dixie, which, holy crap, if that ever happens. Holy crap. You don't want to be around. (laughs) I don't think any of us want to be anywhere near 150 on the Dixie, all right? Because that is just going to make a mess of the global world order. Anyways, uh, I think I've been ranting long enough. Let's say hi to Mish. Let's bring in my man, Mish the Mod, and look at some of what's going on out there in the world today. Mish, how are we doing today? I'm doing good. How is everybody today? Well, I'm doing good. I'm surviving. I uh, Oh, I meant to say in my, my opening monologue, if you will, this whole thing is pretty much a monologue, but we'll say the opening monologue, um, that I w- finally went short the NASDAQ. I did it yesterday. I finally pulled the trigger. I bought some QQQ puts. Um, I was talking to some of my... Patreon supporters about that yesterday, about why I chose QQQ. I, I was thinking of a more long-term trade when I bought some puts in QQQ. Um, I wanted to give myself more time because the last time I went short the indexes, I got burned by that bear market rally over the summer. So I, you know, I was more cautious this time around. Go figure, as I get more cautious, the market just says, <whistles> so I would have been a little bit better off if I had gone with some of the more short-term, highly levered stuff. Then, you know, versus being more cautious, but because I was cautious, you know, whatever trades going well. Uh, anyways, I got a really quick, I have to say thank you very much to my man who is early today. Where is he? There is Mr. Mike Bender from Robin RC models. Thank you, Mike. He says, if I was in debt and the government, I'd make my citizens pay taxes, scaring them by falling equities, creating taxable capital gains that aren't a tax raise. And you know, Mike, if you were a government, you'd be just like every other government in the world. First of all, they all make us pay taxes. They all scare us with falling stock prices, which they are doing on purpose. They being the Federal Reserve, they are bringing down stocks on purpose. And remember, capital gains taxes, right? When inflation causes, say, the value of your house to go up, or if inflation were to drive up the value of some other asset, 
and you sell it at a gain, you owe taxes on the gains, even though you didn't really make any money, it was the value of the currency falling, not the value of the item increasing. So uh, yeah, governments uh, love to give themselves a raise, and they use inflation as a mechanism by which to do that. So uh, thank you very much, Mike. I appreciate the support of the channel, sir, as always. And uh, well, let's just, let's get into this story right here. Uh, I like to start with something a little bit more lighthearted. I don't know how lighthearted this is, but I saw this at some tennis match. I I'm, I'm not a tennis guy. Miss, you're getting a little feedback, by the way. Or is it me? No, it's me. Hold on. I got to close the window here. My bad. Uh, I saw this one. I guess this kid was going to make some kind of statement or protest. And, uh, well, let's just go to the videotape. Didn't go well for this kid. There he is. Now, let me pause it right here. What I think happened here, we'll back up a little bit, is uh, this is a climate change protester, and he's wearing a shirt that says something like, end private jets in the UK. He's protesting the climate. And I guess, uh, you know, he's going to do one of these self-immolation things, which do not try this at home, kids. This is not funny. Well, turns out it really hurts. Who'd have thought? Who'd have thought that setting yourself on fire is immensely painful? And look how fast my man here changed his mind. Look at this. Wiggle, wiggle, ouch, ouch, put it out, put it out. And then he just kind of decided to sit there and hang out and... uh eventually they carry him away now <laughs> i saw this picture and they zoom in on him and man i just couldn't help but crack up when i saw this all right first of all look at the surprise in his face like wow who would have thought this would hurt so much oh my gosh you guys you lied to me you said it wouldn't hurt um also by the way uh when you know self-immolating on national tv to make statements about climate change definitely don the purple socks and the skinny jeans you know great time to make a make a statement like that. And, uh, you know, Mish, I didn't serve in the military, but I hear a lot of statements about uh, incoming small arms fire from a lot of veterans and guys who've been in combat. Is this what they're referring to when they talk about small arms fire? Or something like that? Slightly more complicated. Yeah, than it? yeah pretty much. Anyways, and also, folks, I'm making jokes about this. It's not funny. Hurting yourself is not funny. Don't do that. All right. Uh, but look at this ridiculous human being here because this is who is in charge of energy policy in the whole world, all right? That's why I, I bought this up. There's a couple reasons I bought this up. We'll get to it in a little bit. But one thing is, keep in mind, this ridiculous human being is in charge of energy policy. Him and all the idiots like him, all the people who chain themselves to the road or block trucks or do whatever, right? They are the ones who are, who are determining how much your energy costs, what kind of energy you can use. They're the reason why people are going to freeze in Germany. They're the reason why... You're going broke because you can't afford your utility bills. It's because of these a-holes. That's why. It's not because of the engineers and the scientists who are constantly trying to innovate and for their own self-interest because there's money to be made in energy. But there are armies of people who are trying to solve this problem with physics and math and science. And then there is this legion of imbeciles with their publicity stunts. And they're the ones who are calling the shots. Shouldn't be that way, but it is. We deserve better leaders. But we keep voting for these guys. And through our actions, we elect the people who answer to these guys. Now, I've said several times, watch out for this group of 18-year-olds that's coming out. Yep. Yeah. Careful. What was the, it was a line from Scent of a Woman. Careful the kind of leaders you're, you're creating. All right? Because right now, this is the next generation of leaders. God help us. God help <laughs> us all. Now, I want to contrast this because I have been talking a lot about how if there's one thing 2022 and 2023 are going to be known for, it's going to be civil and social unrest. And I've used the, the line over and over again that when it gets too expensive to eat, people get pissed off. All right? It's an overly simplistic view of things, but it's true. Right? When, when you get food inflation, when food prices rise, pre-existing problems boil to the surface and they spill over and they they turn into worse things all right and case in point is this guy Mohammed Bouazizi all right i've mentioned him on the channel before Mohammed Bouazizi he died in january of 2011 he was a tunisian food cart vendor and the government in tunisia seized his food cart and beat him in the street and humiliated him 
And unlike the little fairy in the skinny jeans and the purple socks, he actually went through with it. And unfortunately, tragically, he died afterward. And that is what started the Arab Spring. All right, The Syrian civil war that is still raging today, the collapse of the government in Egypt, uh, Muammar Gaddafi, who survived how many American presidents and all the things that he did all over the world. He did not survive the Arab Spring. All right? ISIS was born out of the Arab Spring. All these governments across North Africa and the Middle East that collapsed, it all can be traced back to this guy, Mohammed Bouazizi. All right? And it was because of food inflation, because life in Tunisia was getting so hard, because global food prices were on the rise in 2011 dramatically. They're much higher now. And it it kicked off this unbelievable chain of events and social unrest and governments around the world toppled. And the reason I mentioned Mohamed Bouazizi is not because of my man in the skinny jeans. It's because of this girl, Masha Amini. She's a 20 year, she was a 22-year-old woman in Iran who was arrested by the morality police and was beaten and later died because of the injuries sustained by the beating from the morality police. And what was her high crime? She let her hair show. Her hijab was not quite covering enough. So they arrested her and they beat her to death. And now there are riots all over Iran. All right. Now, look, food prices didn't cause these riots. Inflation didn't cause these riots, right? It was the situation with Masha, Masha Amini and what they did to her and how wrong it was. But all of these tensions, they've been beneath the surface for years, and it takes something like this, and it ignites, and it turns into, I, I don't know. I mean, people are standing up for their rights right now. I'm not going to show all these videos that are going on in Iran, but there's videos, at least right up until a day or two ago, when the Iranian government shut down the internet to the whole freaking country to try to stop the flow of information out to the rest of the world. But there was videos of women burning their hijabs in the street cutting their hair out in public and protest. And look, those are all things that can get you killed in that country. And a lot of people are, are standing up and demanding it right now. Yeah, and, unfortunately, we have heard reports of firings. For like, yep, I, I've seen it too. And I've heard yeah. it too. Um, I saw that Elon Musk was going to try to activate Starlink to try to, re you know, try to bring the internet back to Iran. I don't know if that's going to work or if it's just a publicity stunt. Uh, but look, folks, you know, we've been talking about this all year here. It's too expensive to eat. People's lives are being destroyed by this just absolute ineptitude of leadership all over the world. And all it takes is a spark like this and something like that happens. So I don't know what's going to come out of this. There have been widespread protests in Iran an awful lot over the last couple of years. And somehow that government has managed to survive it. Um, but this is a story to keep an eye on. And not just Iran. I mean, this could very easily spread. I've been talking about the Strait of Hormuz, and how if something were to happen in the Strait of Hormuz and the flow of oil will be, would be interrupted there, how oil would go to $300 a barrel almost overnight, and all the chaos that would cause all over the world for everybody. And, you know, when governments are facing unrest with their own people, starting a war is a really good way, not a good way, but it's a go-to way that tyrants try to deflect anger outwards. So I wouldn't put it past the Iranian government to go ahead and do something there and try to spin things up to try to survive these protests. So it so would be nice to have a pro-Western government there. It would, or at the very least, a government that, you know, they don't have to be pro-Western. I mean, I, just, just don't beat girls to death for showing their hair. I, I'm going to set the bar very low, all right? Don't beat women to death for showing their hair. You don't have to be pro-Western. You don't have to like everything we do here. Most people in the world don't like the way we do things in the United States. I get it. Um, but let's start very low. Let's start with don't beat women to death for showing their hair, and we'll see where we go from there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set the bar really low. Anyways, her name was Masha Amini. Remember the name, and keep an eye on that story, folks, because that, that could very easily escalate and spill over from there. Uh, I got to send a shout out to Mr. Cheeseburger. Thank you, Matt, very much. He says the U.S. 10 year yield hit 3.82 while you were sleeping. I did see that. I don't think I have the 10 year yield chart open. I am remiss, but I do have world government bonds. Let's see what we're at right now. The U.S. 10 year is at 3.68, well off its highs today. Let's open that chart up, Matt, while we're here. 
Um, I did see that we were in the high three sevens. I didn't see the 3.8. That's a big one. Yeah, there it is. It hit right about 7 a.m. this morning. I was up at 7 a.m. this morning, or I was I was getting up at 7 a.m. this morning. 3.805 we peaked at. Wow. You know, I'm I'm beginning to think my 2.2 on the 10-year thesis is not going to play out, Mish. I don't know. I don't want to be hasty, but I'm beginning to think that that scenario may not play out that way. It may play out, but it may take a while. <laughs> For months, I said at 2.2% on the 10-year treasury, something was going to break. Well, that didn't really work. Uh, yeah, well, you could argue something broke a long time ago, and we're just coasting down right now. So, you know... I kind of goes back to the old chart we used to look at all the time and make fun of you for bringing up every time um it the whole premise was once you get over that things break it yep. takes a lot for things to break let's let's see if i can is it still saved sometimes it saves my charts is the chart still here let's go full screen that bad boy there it is yeah gotta go so to our one month candles so all the premise was is once you get over that sustain, things break. Well, yeah, I argue things are breaking. Things are, in fact, breaking, sir. Yep, absolutely. All right, I got to also say thanks, uh, thanks again to Cheeseburger. He says he's a great metaphor for the whole movement, all hot air and no fire. I think we're talking about Mr. Purple Socks, um, Mr. Small Arms. Yeah, I agree. He is a great metaphor, and unfortunately, uh, he's, he's in charge. We all answer to him. One way or another, the reason why we're all going to go broke this winter because our utility bills are going to be $5,000 a month to heat your home and keep the power on is because of my man with the purple socks and the skinny jeans. So you can all be thankful for that. And Mr. AK, thank you very much, sir, for your support of the channel and your super chat. He says there's only one way to reverse Smita. Jack, you must get TradingView Pro. The world's fate depends on you. <laughs> I'm still a bear, still short, possibly born in a cave. All right. I, I am I'm not spending nearly as much time as I should. Maybe I'll invest a little time over the weekend in trading view. I'm trying to get more proficient in trading view. I've just I came up on investing in Yahoo Finance. Those were the systems I always used. I know trading view is great. Everybody swears by it. I see a lot of other channels use it. I'll probably use it eventually. It's just right now, if I were to go on my live streams into trading view. It would be an hour of me going, uh, hmm, how do I do this? Uh, yeah, it'd be all dead space. You just wouldn't wouldn't yeah, enjoy you, it. You know, old people with new technology is tough, man. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Thanks, Mish. Who's the old man in this conversation again? Uh -huh. I'm only 29. Oh, yeah? Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> 30th birthday is a real eye-opener, trust me. 30, 31, that's right about the time stuff starts breaking on you. That's when my thyroid oh, yeah, was, was right around 30. Anyway, there, uh, what else we got? There's only one way to reverse the Shemitah. You're talking about the seven-year cycle of letting the land rest, which uh, the Shemitah year comes to an end on the 26th, I believe. I've heard the 24th being thrown around. I'm not sure which one it actually is, but we are coming up to the end of the Shemitah cycle. I have not studied that particular scripture very well. I don't know exactly what it means, but I know a lot of people are saying, look out. And if today's action in markets is any indicator, they're right. So now, if I understand it, Shemitah ends on Monday, but some, the BlackRock quote is the 24th. And those are the two differences. Ah, all right. Well, let me know if I'm wrong, chat. Maybe so. So you're saying I have until Monday to learn trading view. It's the only way to reverse this prophecy is and. Maybe that was written somewhere in the scripture. That might have been a line I skipped. It said, unless Jack learns trading view by Monday. I don't know. I just I just interpret the tea leaves, folks. Huh? That's just me. I don't I don't write them. He says, I'm still a bear, still short, possibly born in a cave. I was not born in a cave. I'm much more civilized. I was raised in a barn. But uh yes, I am now short also. I shouldn't say still short. I just went short yesterday. I'm being a lot more careful than I've been in months past because I got burned so badly by that bear market rally. I don't want to repeat that one. So I'm giving up a little bit of long-term, uh, I'm giving up a little bit of gains for some uh, security here. And geez, I can't keep up with you guys right now. Thank you, Mr. John Tosta, who uh, left me a super sticker. It doesn't translate for some reason, but thank you guys. I appreciate all the support of the channel. Can I find what John sent here? Not coming up. Man, the chats are just 
flowing right now. Nope. Just an empty. Well, thank you, John. I appreciate that very much. Very generous of you guys. You guys are awesome. Thank you. And there is His Majesty, the King of Money, a.k.a. Dumb Money Media. How's it going, Dumb Money Media? It says, hope you guys are liking the short j vids. They are slightly easier to make than the longer four-minute videos. I can speak to how much time can possibly go into a four-minute video. It's a lot more than you think, folks. Video editing just consumes hours. That's why the live streams, they're, they're longer. It takes, that's about the same amount of work. To research and get ready for a one-hour live stream takes about the same amount of time as to research, video, edit, and, and premiere a seven-minute video. It's about the same investment on this thing. So I'm right there with you, King of Money. He says, also, I'm going to expand the silver waifus, waifus. I don't know if I pronounced that one right. But we are looking for that. Check out Dumb Money Media's channel on YouTube, folks. He does his silver hype videos. And thank you very much, Your Majesty, again, for the support of the channel, as always. And I have got PM Galleria says, if a loss of confidence or hyperinflation starts here in the U.S. due to an event or social media, the domino effect for other countries will be... And we got cut off. I'm sorry we got cut off. But, uh... I can tell you the loss of confidence or hyperinflation, you know, without knowing the, the rest of where you were going with that, PM Galleria. Um, Powell is worried about that. Powell spent a lot of time in his speech on Wednesday talking about inflation expectations. It's very important to dis differentiate between inflation and inflation expectations because inflation expectations, that's the psychological phenomena, the self-fulfilling prophecy of people who think their currency is becoming worthless. And so through their actions, they make the currency worthless. And that's the core inflation, which is inflation minus food and energy, right? The Fed likes to talk about core inflation where they strip out the volatile commodity stuff. That's just the price of your average consumer goods, right? Like a blender or a coffee maker, right? When you see core inflation going up, even though commodities are going down, that is people's belief that the money is becoming worth less, and so they're raising their prices, or they're buying more now, they're bringing forward spending that they might do next month or six months from now, because they're worried that that currency is going to be more expensive then. Well, that causes a surge in demand for goods and services, and that causes prices to rise further. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. So you're right, if we get that loss of confidence, which to be honest with you, I'm amazed because I lost confidence a long time ago, uh, but the average person, is only now just starting to lose confidence. We're way ahead of the curve here at Nobody Special Finance. Uh, but yeah, that will be a very big deal. And that has Jerome Powell scared. And I think it was that core inflation and the prospect of inflation expectations becoming unanchored or entrenched, as he likes to say, that that's what scared him. And that's why Powell is such a hawk right now. And that's why he's going to put all of us in the poorhouse. That's why he came out and he, he outright said, we make too much money and our house is worth too much. He actually said, no, not those exact words, but that's what he said at that meeting. We make too much money and our house is worth too much. And so, even though he feels our pain and he's very sympathetic that we have no money after we buy food and after we pay our bills and our rent, that there's no money left over, he feels our pain. But the only thing he can do is kill our jobs and make our homes worth less. And that's a sacrifice he's willing to make after getting rich by investing in stocks while he was printing money and handing it over. So remember, they sold their stocks back in August to eliminate the appearance of a conflict of interest. How ethical of them. And I have got Mr. Mike says, thank you, Mike, from Robin RC Models again. He says, does anyone know if ARC's price can invert? <laughs> ARC, is that uh, Kathy Wood's ARC Invest Innovation ETF? Yeah, I haven't looked at ARC in quite a while, but... Uh, I honestly, I don't know why Kathy Wood still is given such a platform in financial press. She has been so categorically, unequivocally wrong about everything she has said for the better part of two years now. And she had like two really good years while she was investing in things that did well in an inflationary environment while the Fed was printing money at breakneck pace. Anybody could have predicted that. And so she was looked at like worshipped like this idol in the world of finance, but they keep bringing her on the air. She has been wrong about everything. Like only Paul Krugman has been wrong about more things than her in the last two years. And that's a bold freaking statement right there, dude. That is a bold statement. So do I know if it can invert? I don't know. Sure it can. If the Fed turns on the tap again, I expect ARK Invest to do very well. But right now, not so much. 
Thank you, Mike, very much for the super chat, sir. I appreciate I it. Real quick, uh, all this, everything she invests in needs um, debt, and no one can get debt right now. Yep, needs so. easy money. The, the the printer don't go burr no more, no more burr. Now we're, the printer's going herb. We got anti burr. We're going herb. J Powell go herb. He's taking all that money back and he's burning it. It's a furnace. Last Bear Standing uh, put out a, something on his Substack today about the furnace, about how they're burning money, but they're burning it a little too fast. Dumb Money Media again. Thank you, sir. Says just rendering is three to five hours for 30 to 45 seconds vids. I feel you, dude. I know what you mean. It takes a lot of time, folks. It seems like, yeah, I'm going to be a YouTuber. It's real easy. You have no idea how time consuming this is. No idea. My eyeballs hurt by the end of the day from staring at screens and looking at charts all day. I sit too close, maybe. Maybe it's time for new spectacles. I don't know. Thank you, Dumb Money Media, once again, for the Super Chats. And I am not able to keep up with you guys. There's Miracle Oil, says Jack. QQQ RSI is at oversold. Do you expect a bounce from here? Has gold broke support? I don't even want to see the oil chart, LOL. Will you enter LNG? Starting at the end. No, I'm not entering LNG. Um, although it seems like that formaldehyde thing was a nothing burger. So I'm not too worried about that. Let me look at your QQQ and the RSI looking oversold because just about everything looks oversold right now. But keep in mind, it can stay for quite a while. Uh, not one month. Let me get a one-day candle here. All right. Is QQQ oversold? Yeah, I'm looking at the RSI. We're down around 30. Uh, but I can tell you, we've been lower here. You know, we were lower back in January of 2022, right? The RSI back then was at 23. And look how far down we have come since January. So I do see what you're saying, Miracle Oil, that the are the that it looks a little oversold. The momentum indicators are getting down there, but we can stay down here for an awful awful long time on this one and another thing to look at is the macd tends to front run the rsi so yeah the rsi can kind of forecast a movement in the price or a change in the direction of the price the macd can forecast a change in the direction of the rsi i'm sure a better ta analyst could tell me all the flaws in that statement but that's just what i've seen and look the macd is saying there's plenty of room below all right, the MACD is nowhere near turning, nowhere near a crossover. So QQQ, in the short term, still heading lower, still heading lower. And we'll look a little bit more at the NASDAQ chart. Um, well, let's, let's bring up the NASDAQ chart while we're here because let's just say it's a don't look down scenario. You know, I think I, did I put that in the description? I think I put that in the description because here we go. All right. Let me let me shrink the RSIs and the momentum indicators a little here so you can see this chart a little better. Uh, look, folks, we're we're coming up on this support level that I mentioned, the low from June, which was right around ten thousand six hundred, just below ten thousand six hundred, right? And that was the low from back in September of twenty twenty. Um, where you know I I drew that line a while ago. We were nowhere near that line. We have we've come down real fast to that line. And if that level doesn't hold, and right now I have no reason to suspect that level is going to hold. All right. So if we break below this support level right now, where's your next support? A freaking long way down from here. And that's why I've been saying don't look down. Uh, this bear market is nowhere near over. It's nowhere near over. The Fed is still tightening. And I just go back to bear markets of old, right? The Fed has to stop tightening, and then they typically wait a little while, a couple of months, and then they gradually start loosening, and then they really loosen. All right, That's a process that plays out over like a year. We're still tightening. We are nowhere near a bottom in this market, nowhere near a bottom. And that was just the way the bear markets played out during the age of free money, right? The global financial crisis. The uh, unfortunate health situation of 2020, the Powell pivot in 2018, right? Those were, that's how the Fed was always, the Fed is always late to the game. And they take those actions when they're late. And that's what they did when we didn't have an inflation problem. This time around, we have an inflation problem. So if anything, the Fed is going to take even longer to pivot this time around, much longer to pivot this time around because core inflation is still high. 
Well, they essentially told us they're going to raise at least 150 more basis points in the next three months. Yeah. And, and remember that what they, what they forecast, like I have to keep them like their expectations, their dot plots, they're, they're worthless, right? Because a year ago, their dot plot said no rate hikes until the end of 2023. Mm-hmm. How'd that work out for us? So, Folks, we can go a lot lower from here. We're coming up on this support level, about 10,006. We're probably going to hit it mid next week at our current level, maybe even Monday. And I mean, heck, we could hit that before we close today. There's only 14 minutes left of trading. It's just been that kind of week. If we break below that, I don't see any support for a a long way down. I'm not even going to draw that line. It's so right. far below here, we're not even going to worry about that. But worry yeah, about that 10.6 level in the NASDAQ. If we go below yeah. that, we go down hard. Yeah. Are you starting to back up again? All righty. That's, that's Mish saying moving on. Thank you again, Miracle Oil, very much for the support of the channel and for your comments. AK is back. He says, to make your channel more professional, you need to start writing on cardboard. <laughs> Example, Dixie 129. You mean something like this? Can you see that? You can't really see it. No, you can't see it. It says, like Ninja? Question mark? <laughs> Look, man, Ninja's got this thing hacked. All right? Ninja's got the formula. I have watched that guy crank out videos like that. Videos that just rake in the views. He can move a crowd. Like me on my best day. I can't do what Ninja does for 30 seconds on my best day. All right? That guy can do more with with his phone and cardboard than I can do with all my charts and all my analysis and all my research. Hats off to you, Ninja, dude. You have got the formula. He's got this thing figured out. Um, no, I'm not going to do the cardboard. Gotta, I got to be me. The cardboard works. It works really well for him. Hats off to him. I bust his chops for the cardboard all the time when we're talking, and he he takes it in stride. He's he's got a he doesn't take himself too seriously. He's got a good sense of humor, the ninja. So, but thank you very much, AK, for the super chat, for the support of the channel, and for the laugh. And there's my man Jose Orozco, the keeper of Bucky's corn nuggets. He says too much to keep track of the train strike, which didn't happen. That one's behind us now, Jose. Well, uh oh, uh, 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 oh, it's back. Uh oh, Mish, what do you have for us? They still have to write the paper. And vote on it. Oh, I thought so that was this behind is just us. A handshake agreement. Wow. So okay. there's still more to it. Wow. The unions have not voted yet. Well, let's talk about that because we did the uh, we did the math the other day. I was talking to Mish about this, right? I'm going to do some numbers here real quick. They were promised a 24 percent raise over five years. The rail strike guys, right? Mm-hmm. And that's a really good raise, right? Most of you are probably sitting there saying. Oh, 24% raise. That's way more than I got. Jeez. And you're right. 24% is a great raise, but it's over five years. Now, 24% over five years. So say you make round numbers for the sake of argument. You make $100,000 as a railroad worker. After five years, you'll be making $124,000. Pretty good deal, right? It's a good living, $124,000. But let's assume for a second that inflation stays right about where it is which according to John Williams, shadowstats.com is about 18% annually. All right. So let's take that hundred thousand dollars and multiply it times 1.18 five times it means 18% inflation over five years. One, two, three, four, five, your cost of living in order to maintain your today cost of living after five years with an 18% rate of inflation, those railroad workers would have to be making $228,000 a year just to maintain today's standard of living. Now, how does that 24% raise look? So have you ever heard of the rule of 72? Yes, I have. If Go you ahead, take, take 72 and you, and you um, um, divide it by the interest, it'll give you the number of years it takes to double. Wow. Yeah, and do that with 18. So look, folks, the, the railroad workers, like, I am not... Anybody who knows me, you've known me for a long time. Like I've, I've never been like a big fan of what goes on at some of the organized labor places. And like, you know, I used to work in, a, in an environment with organized labor. And like if I was spotted holding a screwdriver, I would have a grievance written against me because I was management 
And I should have hired one of the union brothers to come hold that screwdriver for me at freaking twice an hourly rate that I was making as an engineer. All right. Like, well, I, you know, so, so I, I've, I've run, I've gone against the union quite a bit in my day, but I can tell you these railroad guys, they're right. You need that raise. 18% inflation, dude. It's time to pay up. Our friend Sage is saying that the uh, his guys he's are talk he is talking to okay. are not liking the plan. Yeah. Tell Sage to give him my numbers. That at today's rate of inflation, according to John Williams Shadowstats.com, they need to be making two hundred and twenty eight thousand dollars a year at the end of that five years just to match a hundred thousand today. That is how bad this inflation is, and that's assuming it doesn't get worse. It's gonna get worse. So Thank you, Jose Orozco, for the super chat, sir, for the support of the channel. And once again, for the Bucky's Corn Nuggets, those things were good. PM Galleria says, PM Galleria is my channel. Well, I didn't know that, PM Galleria. I am putting that one on the list. Um, that channel is new to me. I will check that one out when this stream is done. And Mish is going to remind me, right, Mish? Right? I will. Yeah, uh, Mish remembers. Like the North... Mish my channel, I specialize in fine art made out of precious metals and gems. Now you're speaking my language, PMG. I would love to know your view on it as a dual asset hedge. Okay, so I hear a lot of guys talking about art. Uh, me, I am very uh, unrefined. I'm a simple guy. Uh, I, I'm not that into art. All right, I'll just say it. Like, you know, I, I, I had a girlfriend in the past and she was real fancy and she was into art and I just kind of like tried to play along when she was talking about art. Like I was, I'd embarrass myself if I tried to weigh in on art. All right. So you're asking the wrong guy here. All right. Well, I'm well, a dog's playing poker kind of guy. I think you may be talking something else here. Um, yes, there is the art piece, but it's also precious metals and gems. Yes. Is he talking so, that is the dual asset? I'm a big fan of precious metals and gems, right? Big fan of PMs and gems. Um, but I like weight, right? So like bars, if I were to buy like a gold statue, I'm going to pay a lot more for the gold statue because it's a work of art that is also made of gold than I would the weight of the statue in bars. If I had the option, I'd probably go for the bars. I just, I don't appreciate fine art. It's, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with fine art. It's just not for me. There are other people who are much more into it. And I know there's a lot, there's like websites out there that will make jewelry out of four, nine fine gold instead of 14 carat or 18 carat um, carries a pretty high premium. It's an interesting concept. I, I keep it simple. I go for the weight, um, but PM gallery, I'm going to check out your channel as soon as we're done here. So thank you very much for pointing that out and for the super chats. I appreciate that. And I do yeah. love the metals and I do love the stones. I, I find they are both excellent stores of value, even if they're not performing all that well in today's Strong dollar environment. Weekly QQQ closing below the 50-day moving average today. Yeah, probably will. Let me bring up the 50-day real quick, king of money. I am really... Okay, let's put my QQQ back up here. And let's add the moving average, 50-day. Well below that 50-day moving average. Well below. Yep. We will definitely be closing below that. Or is that the 50-month? I don't know. That might have. He might have been talking monthly there. But thank you very much, Your Majesty. Once again, I appreciate the super chat, sir, and the support of the channel. You guys are so good today. Cheeseburger, I got spooked and sold out of SQQQ yesterday. Well, you made a profit, Cheese. Nobody ever got hurt taking a profit. Your profit could have been a little bigger, but you, sound, you probably did okay. Would it be a bad idea to get back in? Also, I saw what you wrote on the cardboard, FJB. <laughs> that is not what I wrote on the cardboard. I might have been thinking it, but I didn't write it. Um, SQQ, would you get back in? Uh, well, I am still in QQQ puts. I'm not buying more today. I bought yesterday, but I'm not going to sell my QQQ puts yet. So I don't know. I, I, I'd have to look. Would I get back in today? I, I'm, I'm not going to make a call quite like that. It's probably a good bet. The only thing I can tell you is I am being cautious. All right. I'm, I'm putting my trades out further than I normally would just in case we get another one of these bear market rallies. I, I don't trust the establishment financial system, and maybe they would engineer another one of these bear market rallies just to harvest premiums from all the people who have bought puts and all the people who have gone shorts, engineer a mini squeeze and get their money out and then let the market fall, which I think is what happened from June to September. 
with something like that. Uh, so I'm being more cautious and I'm buying more longer term stuff to give myself time to ride out a storm like that if it hits again. So just be careful not to go out on leverage and not to go too short dated. All right. Give your, that's again, not a financial advice, not financial advisor, all that CYMA stuff. That's what I'm doing with my money right now. I'm going a little bit longer term. I think this bear market is going to last a long time and it's going to be very deep. So I'm not going to take too much risk to try to make short term levered plays. Hopefully I summarized that very well there. And thank you, Cheeseburger, for your continuing support of the channel. MB meant QQQ weekly 200 moving average. So the 200 week moving average. All right. I typically don't deal in the weekly moving averages, but let's look at it. So we have to change the candle to one week. And then we're going to put the moving on the, did you say the 50 or the 200? He said the 200. Okay. 200. 200 week average. So that's a four year. Oh, average. wow. Look at that. Look at top, that top low, right low there, up. huh? That is a good eye, king of money. Man, that wick, that lower wick just came out and touched it. Right there. All right, we're going to leave that one open. We'll see where we close. We've got a couple of minutes until market close. I don't know if we're going to close below that line, but man, we just barely touched it. That was a pretty good eye there, king of money. I would not have caught that one. Fine bit of TA, your majesty. Fine bit. All right, moving on. Still catching up. And I've got my man, Chicken Rick. By the way, hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. Not Chicken Rick, sorry. I did see Dad in the comments before, but I got distracted. I love you guys. Thank you for watching. I get a text message from my mom when I, forgot, when I forget to say hi to them. They do. They guilt me. Oh, she's so good at that. She's a sweetheart, though. All right, Chicken Rick. He says, I grew my flock from six chickens to 35 this year. You're up 29 chickens. Mish, how's my math? We good? We get the same thing? I'm yep. adding some goats in the spring. How many goats should I add to beat meat inflation? It's a family show, Chicken Rick. Let's not talk about beating our meat. But, uh, geez, congratulations on growing your flock. Did you do so organically with your own rooster, or did you buy more birds? That's interesting. Um, I know Chris Taylor over at Financial Prepper, he was raising birds. He bred them. He bought himself an incubator. And his big idea was to raise birds and trade a laying hen for an ounce of silver. So he's going to breed his chickens and then and then trade in front. I love the barter system. I love it. Try to tax that, you 87,000 new IRS agents. I double dog dare you. Go try to tax that. Go try to find it. Anyways, I hope I didn't just get Chris audited. Oh, boy. I know they're watching this channel. <laughs> Yay, IRS. Love you guys. Yeah. Adding goats. It's interesting. I've heard a couple people mention goats. I've heard folks mention sheep. Um, but most people say rabbits is the next logical step. Once you get into keeping animals and growing your own food, I've heard from chickens, you usually go to rabbits. But it, so goats, that's there, interesting. One problem with rabbits is called rabbit starvation. Um, you have to make sure you eat another fat source with it. Really? Because it's such a lean meat? Is that why? Yep. That's interesting. Okay. Now, the one thing about goats is they are voracious eaters. I, I There's guys out here where I live who rent out their goats for clearing land. Like you can rent their goats. They'll bring their goats to your property and they'll set up a temporary fence around the area that you want cleared. And they just let their goats run there and they eat and destroy all the brush up to a height of like five and a half feet. They will clear out everything. It's a good way to make money off your goats and have somebody else pay to feed them while, or pay you to feed them. You just got to drive them around and set them up. Interesting little high side hustle idea. Take if you're if you're getting goats, chicken Rick, maybe think about like renting them out as a land clearing operation. I've seen guys do it out here. I don't know if they make good money or not, but certainly cut down your feed costs, generate a little bit of side income. But thank you very much, Chicken Rick, for the super chat and the support of the channel, sir. And congratulations on the growing of your flock. And dad says, Mom's on the phone with your oldest sister right now. Don't sweat it. I'll tell her you did a shout out. All right, mom. She missed my shout out. Thanks, Dad, for watching. You guys are awesome. Tell Kara I said hi. All right. Where else? Where were we? Let's go through the indexes. Have we even made it through the indexes close. once today? Market we're close. at close. <laughs> at, we've been going 45 minutes, and I haven't even gotten to the indexes today. You guys are, you guys are on top of me right now. All right. The S&P is down 62.39 or 1.66% to close out the week at 36.95. Dow Jones at 29.6, below that all-important 30,000 psychological level. 
Managed to run a little bit into the close there. Got back a few hundred points. Down 475.66 for the day. At one point, we were down 700. Were we down eight at one point? Yes. Oh, wow, 800 at one point. So we got a little bit of, little bit of a reprieve at the end there. Down only 1.58%. The NASDAQ, the big loser of the day, down 198.88, or 1.8% at 10,867. Now, interestingly, the NASDAQ got down to 10.7, looks like 10.730. So within about 130 points of that 10,600 level that I've been mentioning, watch that level next week, folks, 10,600 on the NASDAQ. We go below that June low. And look out below, man. There's there's a long way down before we get any support if we go lower than that next week. All right, I have to go all the way to the end here. We're good. Uh, commodity space this week? Well, let's just say a sea of red. And Oh, look, orange juice was up today. Orange hey. juice futures are up, so it's How good. we're looking do? forward to that. What was that, Mish? How did wheat do? Wheat, uh... Wheat was down 33, 3.73% today. Orange juice futures, that must have been uh, Billy Ray and Lewis or Mortimer and Randolph. They were bidding up orange juice mm-hmm. futures. Let me know down in the comments if you know what I'm talking about there. Anyways, uh, gold was down 29.50 or 1.75%. Silver just took it on the jaw, down 75.5 cents, 3.84%. And crude got beat up pretty good. Although it closed off the lows of the day at 79.14. I saw crude was down around 78, 76 even, I think, at one point today. Yeah, it really was low. And, you know, guys, I've been saying on these live streams for a long time now, I've been, I'm trying to find a bottom in crude. I really want to make that trade. But the technicals have not been showing me a bottom. And so I've stayed out of that trade. And I don't regret it because it just keeps going lower. And, you know, there's, there's two sides of this game. There's the macro side. And I feel like I've got a pretty good grasp of the macro side. I think I'm pretty good at that. The technical side, there are better TA guys than me. There are better technical analysts out there, like guys like Johnny Bravo. Johnny, you're hilarious, by the way. But Johnny's really good with the technicals. Uh, Game of Trades, really good with the technicals. You need to know both. All right, You need to know the macro, and you need to know the technicals to do this. All right, It's like if any of you guys are UFC fans, right? you, you need to be able to stand up, and you need to have a ground game. Because you can be the best in the world at stand-up, somebody is going to take you down and beat you there. You could be the best in the world on the ground, you're going to get knocked out standing up. You need to have both, all right? And trading is the same way. You need to have the macro, you need to know what's going on in the world, and you need to be able to spot those chart patterns, all right? So the macro has been screaming, get into oil, get into oil, but the chart has not been letting me do it. And look, this chart here is not showing me a bottom, folks. Let's start with the price. Nope. No bottom in sight on oil right there. I thought we were close, but we are not. Still heading lower. Just when you think you're there, look at that big red candle down. All right, now I drew this support level around 74, 75. Um, We're coming up on that. Maybe we find a bottom there. I don't know. I'll let you know when I see it, folks. Um, But I've been watching the RSI, and look, we just came down and touched that bottom on the RSI. We actually closed a little bit below it today. So the momentum indicators are saying we're still heading lower. The macro case, OPEC cannot meet production. We've got civil unrest all over the world. We've got, they just announced the 100,000 barrel a day production cut. We had, I think it was the energy minister of Nigeria or one of the the smaller OPEC countries was quoted today saying they may have to cut production. Got the draining of the SPR, can't go on forever. The macro case for oil is very strong. Of course, a global recession is very bad for oil demand, so you got to keep that in mind. Uh, but supply is tight and it's getting tighter. But the technicals are not there yet. So I still have not made the oil trade. I'm staying out of that one. Now we are in our band now that we discussed because as a low, you had said 79. Yeah. I had 69. Well, so my we low have, like, certainly uh, did not hold. Yeah. It's, it's so what, let's, let, let's move this line down to Mish's 69 level. Go a little bit lower than that. See how it lines up with the support and resistance from the two previous pumps? Yeah, there you go. I mean, there's your 69 level. I I, I see what you're saying there. And yeah, uh, right, right we're on pace to hit it, Mitch. Yes, we are. So, ah, uh, Dan Hedin, my man Dan from Patreon, he got it. Dan says, looking good, Billy Ray. 
To which I say, feeling good, Lewis. Feeling good. See, that's why I love these guys. Gotta love these guys. By the way, tell me you're a Gen Xer without really telling me you're a Gen Xer, Dan. Someone got that quote. Great movie. Might have to watch that one this week. Y'all want me to break something else? I'm no. not gonna lie. The best part of the movie to me is when they're planning and then performing the buy. You know how like with um the movie, what's the one where they're in Marine Boot Camp? Stripes? No, no, Army Boot Camp. But um anyway, it's the one with Joker and Cowboy and the guy ends up shooting himself like Oh, oh uh Full Metal, Full Jacket. Metal Jacket. I only watched the first half. No one cares about the second half. I feel that way with training places, but opposite. Okay. I don't know, man. The second half of, I mean, the, the whole scene, the sniper scene was kind of hard to watch, but still a well done movie. Anyways, thank you very much, Dan and Dean, for the support of the channel and for getting the movie reference. I feel a little less old right now, even though Mish made me feel old today. <laughs> Contrarian08, thank you, sir, for the support. He says, do we crash on Monday? Question mark. Margin calls. We probably got some of those margin calls this week, but there is plenty of margin left in markets. Do we crash on Monday? You know, look, Contrarian, if I could tell you the day it was going to crash, <laughs> I'd, I would be an insanely wealthy man by now if I could tell you to the day when it would crash. I wish I could. Do I see a whole lot of good things happening between now and Monday? Nope. No. Nope. So, uh, hey, maybe our leaders suddenly don't suck by Monday. Maybe suddenly they become financially illiterate. Financially literate, not illiterate. Yeah. They're literate. currently illiterate. Yes. Maybe they decide, hey, turns out we need energy and we should invest in energy and not deliberately destroy our sources of energy. A uh, hat tip to Belgium, by the way, got to change that over there. Maybe that change happens by Monday, in which case I expect markets to rally. Probably not going to happen, though. By the way, I got to send a shout out to Jamie Dimon, CEO of JP Morgan. I am not, by any standard, the president of the Jamie Dimon fan club. All right. I don't like JP Morgan very much at all. I'm a silver guy. They are not our friends. All right. But one of those imbecile squad members in Congress yesterday saying, yes or no question, will you commit immediately to zero new money for oil and gas? Like making this grandiose grandstanding statement, trying to get the CEOs of every bank in the world to accept this blackmail zero new investment in oil and gas, which, again, when you hear no oil and gas, I want you to understand that means poor people on the other side of the world dying. That's what that means right now. And Jamie Dimon just flat out said, no, absolutely not. That would be a pathway to hell for America. Good on you, Jamie Dimon. Get some. Get some. Put, in it, put the kibosh on that garbage right away. We need higher standards of leadership, folks. Anyways, like I said, not the biggest fan of Jamie Dimon. But uh, I got to give him credit for that. To, to stand up and say that in Congress, knowing that she's going to just go off on a rant and whatever socialist garbage that she was going to spew out of her mouth after that. Good for Jamie Dimon. Now we may get back to our regularly hated hating on Jamie Dimon. All right. Uh, margin calls could come anytime. Thank you very much, Mr. Contrarian08, for your support of the channel. Uh, Cheeseburgers Prince, back. Or Princess uh, Consuela said that if Brent goes much slower, he, he's going to get called on it. Going to get called on it. Ouch. Yeah. Listen, guys, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to throw out the CYMA stuff about the, the margin and everything, but. You know, these are volatile times right now, up and down. Be mindful of going out on leverage, all right? I never touch this stuff. I never touch margin. I, I don't borrow money to invest. Especially that, look, you know, it's getting expensive. Debt is expensive. Margin is debt, all right? So, you know, I, I'm a big proponent of the responsible use of debt, borrowing when it's cheap and investing in things that could go up in value. I get it. But it's dangerous right now, not when, you know, we're in essentially rigged markets and look, you know, the algorithms could very easily engineer a $10 sell-off in crude next week or something else, or they could just decide a thousand point rally. And if you're out on margin, they could stop you out and they could wipe you out, take your money and then let it fall right back to where it is. And now you're left, your money's gone, you don't have your position anymore, and it would have been profitable if you hadn't gone out on margin. So be careful going out on margin, guys. 
not financial advice, not financial advisor, do your own research, your own DD, arrive at a decision right for you based on your unique situation. And all right, Cheeseburger, he says, why is fuel still 270 a liter, a litre? Uh-oh, I don't speak metric system, buddy. When crude is now back where it was in December when gasoline was 175 a liter. Do you watch UFC? I don't watch UFC as much as I used to. I used to watch it a lot. Um, I can appreciate the sport. Um, I, I couldn't tell you who the champ is right now or anything like that. I'm, I'm very behind in all the sports. I spend all my day reading the charts, guys. I literally do this. All day long. All day long. All day. This takes way more work than you think it does. My eyeballs hurt even now. No, I'm not going to the eye doctor, Gigi. She's probably in the other room saying, you're going to the doctor. Sorry. Gigi needs to go to the doctor and get glasses. Yeah. No. Sorry. <laughs> Charts to read, folks. Moving on. Uh, 270 a liter when crude is now back. So he's saying, why is gasoline still expensive when crude has gone down? Um, without knowing exactly where you are. Oh, New Zealand. Okay. So that's probably got to do with your refinery capacity in New Zealand. I don't know what's happened to New Zealand specific refinery capacity, right? But remember, crude is the ingredient. You got to cook it. You got to crack it. You got to turn it into gasoline. You got to turn it into diesel, right? And if refineries are being shut down or maybe your refineries are being taxed or there are outages, again, I, I haven't followed the New Zealand story that closely, but if I had to guess, I would say it has to do with either taxes or some reduction in refinery capacity in your area. That's why the gas price is still higher, even though the oil price has come down. No, it is not because of your gas station owner. That was one of the lowest, cheapest political tricks I've ever seen a politician here in the States make when they tried to blame the freaking gas station owner. How dare he want to make nearly two cents a gallon profit off of your gasoline when the government is taxing it like 65, 70 cents. Anyway, thank you very much, Cheeseburger, as always, for the support of the channel. Appreciate it very much, sir. And are we caught up? We are not. Cheese is back again. Yeah, it was her. It was her aggression plus stupidity plus influence. That, that's a pretty good formula. Wow. Yeah, somebody put all those personality flaws in a blender, hit power, and that's what we got. Uh, cheeseburger says that they actually get their gas from Singapore, and uh, my my input into that is is that though the the price of crude does affect gasoline, it does not affect it to the to the point people think it affects. There's a lot more involved there, taxes, transportation, salary. So at a certain point, there's this like float where oil like affects gas. It's affected yeah. it, but it's and, you know you also see especially if, if they're exporting refined products, you're not refining your own. So now you have to worry about maybe the government in Singapore is trying to suppress their domestic prices for political reasons. So they might put a levy on exports. That's going to drive up the cost of your fuel, drive down the cost of theirs. And they do that to keep more of the refined products in their own markets. Or it could be the cost of the carriers. You know, there's so much stuff being shipped around the world right now. Maybe there's, you know, the tankers are raising their rates. It costs money to ship that stuff across the pond. So, you know, any number of those factors. Um, so if you're listening to me, New Zealand, that Skeletor lady who's in charge over there, build an oil refinery for crying out loud. It's not like you're going to use any more or any less. The only difference is you become more secure when you use your own energy supplies and you don't rely on Singapore for it. I just throw them out there. Do what you want with them. By the way, get rid of her, that lady in charge over there. She's terrible, man. Ooh, my skin crawls when I hear her talk. We need better leaders, folks, all over the world. We need higher standards. And I'll just mention one of the reasons why, because most of us don't vote in primaries. That's why our leaders are so bad. We all rail against the two-party system here in the States. We all say they both stink. They're both so bad. How many of us actually vote in a primary? Because that's when these leaders are chosen. They're chosen in the primaries, and then we have to pick between the lousy choices that the primaries give us. Mm -hmm. So if you want to have an impact, your vote will count four or five times the weight if you vote in the primary versus if you vote in the general, because so few people vote in the primaries. So, you know. Drew Jett said they had one, but it got closed. I guess he's also a Kiwi. Ah, they had a, uh, they had a refinery. Yeah, we're shutting down ours here. God, can you imagine what you would go through if you tried to build a refinery in this country right now? You can't. You never get to the EPA certification. You know why you can't get one built? 
this guy. You need his permission. And what you, here's here's the pitch. You just need to watch him. Like, Look, buddy, you know how many arms we could we could ignite if you let us build this thing. Which, by the way, where did that accelerant come from? You schmuck. Came from refinery. Ow, that hurts. <laughs> Stop it. Did you see him squirm? Look at him flail his legs. Where is it? Let me close. Look at look at him flail. This beta male whiny little thing. Look at him kick. Look at him. Them little skinny little legs will move, won't they? This guy. Oh my god. This is who we all work for. This is the man calling the shots, folks. Incoming small arms fire. I'm so proud of myself for my small arms fire joke. All right, you know, I had a whole lot of windows open, Mish. A whole lot of stuff I was going to talk about, but I spent way too much time on purple socks here. So no, uh, never got there. That's okay. Never got there. Yeah. Maybe we get some more videos out this weekend then, because I got a whole bunch of windows open that we didn't talk about. Uh, got some good stuff in the back. Yep, good stuff left on there. All right, guys, we've been going for an hour now, and uh, you know, I think an hour is long enough. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna cut it off now. I want to say thank you very much, everybody, for watching. Thank you to this imbecile on my screen now for making the whole world miserable for billions of people. You suck, sir. Um, thank you for, yeah, somebody's mentioning Greta. Yeah, Greta. This is, this is Greta now. The same thing. Same, same animal, folks. Uh, thank you to my Patreon supporters, you guys. I appreciate everything. Had a great discussion with you guys yesterday. And on Wednesday, I will be uploading the uh, Zoom call from Wednesday this evening. Uh, we get together once a week and and Patreon over a Zoom message, and we have a little back and forth. It's a good discussion. Had a pretty good call this week. A lot of guys on that. There is a link down below, should you feel so inclined. Um, and, you know, just when I go, just when I just when I think I'm out, they pull me back in. That's some good movie quotes today. Zarkos, how you doing today, brother? Zarkos says, I want to thank you for your great videos. I see the Dow Jones crater to 26,000. Top negative 40%. So that would be down 40%. All right, we're going to look real quick, Zarcos. Where's that 40,000 number coming from? Uh, I do I do my best work in, in YF. We're going to go YF. Let's look at the Dow. By the way, close at 29,590. Ouch. So he thinks what did you say? go down to 26. 26. Well, you know, that's not too far below my line here. Well, there's a support, resistance, whatever, a little higher up. Um that it might stop at a little uh, a little more like up up. Sorry, you can't see where I'm pointing. Anyway, yeah. I think I see his twenty six number. I mean I, I see where he's got where he's getting at, right around there. Yeah, you know, I I think we get there in a hurry. We, we can get get rid of these lines, by the way. We don't need to stick to those. Um I can see us getting there pretty quick, like within a couple of months. Hopefully not sooner than that. That would be a bloodbath. But yeah, Zarcos, I, I see it. And, you know, where we're at right now, we've we've already taken out the low in June in the Dow. Uh, I'm not sure. Has the S&P taken out its June low yet? Let's go to the chart for the S&P. The NASDAQ has not yet taken out its June low. And the NASDAQ leads the way down in this environment. So I would say, nope, we did not break below our June low in the S&P. Not yet. We, it's really close. Really close. And there right, is but I'm, I'm taking my signals from the NASDAQ right now because we are in a in a asset deflationary environment with interest rates rising. And that is a terrible environment for the NASDAQ. So I'm going to I'm going to take my cues from the NASDAQ right now. But I, I the Dow has already broken below its June low. So that tells me the NASDAQ will probably do the same. Um, it also tells me the NASDAQ ran too far too fast. And it's got a long way to go. I, I'm, I'll be honest with you, folks. I think we could see our March low, our March of 2020 low. I really do. If, if this is really the end of the era of free money, then all bets are off. Now we're talking like one-month candles, and we need to zoom way out, folks. Because, look, the NASDAQ could go to 6,000, and that would only be the level from 2017. That's not that far back. This era of free money started in... 1980, 82, at the end of the Volcker days. So let's not try to call bottoms anytime soon. Let's just put it that way. Let's not be calling bottoms. We've got a long way to go. 
Darkos, thank you very much, sir. I appreciate the support of the channel, as always. And congratulations on your returns. I know you're doing pretty well right now. So good, good on you, and thank you for your kind words, sir. I appreciate it. All right, guys. I think the weekend is upon us. Uh, look, I, I've been saying this a lot. I'm going to say it again. Hard times are coming. Um, I see them getting here pretty soon, but they are not here yet. So enjoy these days. Make the most of them. Prepare for the bad times, but enjoy the good times. So have an awesome, awesome weekend. Mish, anything you want to say, sir? Everybody stay safe. You know, things may or may not happen, but in the end, if you're safe, you're safe. Good luck. That's right. Wise words, sir. All right, guys. Have an awesome weekend. Thank you very much for your support. And until next time, live small and dream big.